I love the Lord as my personal savior. I am married. God gave me a chance 20 years ago. In fact, 25 years ago to fall in love with a model. A queen. The valentine of my heart. One and only Sarah Masinde. She's in the house. Kindly mama stand up. Just stand. Thank you. Sumpigie makofi kwani waruni ya nini? You know there are only two times when a man really feels proud of his wife. One is when he's introducing her and the other one is when they are walking together and she's expectant. And tells the whole world see what we have done. Otherwise, the rest of it all, they'll always want the lady to walk ahead and he walks behind. But we thank God. We are blessed with three children. Uh, Enoch, who has refused to be called a child because he's, uh, he turned 19, now he's headed to 20. He feels like he's a man. And I bless God for that because you need to appreciate as they grow up, you don't continue calling them children, although they are. Second born is Ezra, uh, doing his third form. And of course, I have only one baby, Martha, whom sometimes some of you, when you get me with her, you ask me, is this your first born? And sometimes I wonder, do I look that young? When I'm not preaching the gospel, I'm, I work. I'm an insurance salesperson for that matter. I sell insurance with an organization called Britam. That is my career. It's good for me to let you know because sometimes we meet and you're like, where does this work? Or you think I'm an elder the rest of my life. No, when I'm not eldering, I'm working. Praise be to God. And I always pride myself on one thing. That when I'm given an opportunity to preach, I preach with one heart and one mind and with a passion. And when I get a chance to go on the other side to advise people on financial matters, again, I do it with a passion. Because there are only two things. If you listen to me on both of them well, you will enjoy your stay in heaven. And if you listen to me well on the other one on financial planning, you will enjoy your life here on earth pretty well. So I prepare you both on earth and in heaven. Today, I'm privileged and I say thank you pastor, senior pastor and the pastoral team for giving me a chance to share this morning. I can only tell you sit put because you won't be disappointed. I can assure you even no slumber will come your way. Praise be to God. If it comes, please stand up and say, it is coming. We are following up on our theme, Engage, Sow, and Blossom. And being in the first quarter, we are still talking about engaging. Amen? And when we talk about engaging, there are many, many areas that we can engage. Last Sunday, Pastor Ruth talked about engaging 
especially in the area of children. Today, I want to lay an emphasis on engaging with a special emphasis a little bit on men. How can we engage as men? When God gave us that theme, we may not have fathomed, we may not have imagined the depth of those three powerful words. And that is why today, I want to speak to us on an area that will concern more men, but women are also included. We are looking for men and women that are going to be ready to engage. And I have titled my message, Engage and Be Engaged. Each and every one of us, we are engaged in one thing or another. And allow me to say this. If you don't get engaged yourself, people will engage you. You didn't get that. If you don't get engaged, people will engage you. What am I saying? If you don't get busy yourself, then people will involve you in their business. If you have nowhere you are going, then people will invite you in their journey. If you have nothing that you are doing, then people will involve you in what they are doing. And men get engaged in many things. One of the things that we engage in is when we are proposing to our spouses. It happens at least once in a lifetime. But for some, it can happen several times. How many ladies would want to be engaged more than once? By the same man. In their journey. Lift up your hand. You would want to be engaged every day. That's what the message I'm hearing. And if there is a cry in our society today. Then it is the cry of the absence of man. In this society. Follow me closely. We were having a chat with my wife yesterday as we were going for a visitation to our school, to, to our son's school. And in our discussion, she brought about a story about a friend, a true story of a man whose duty and responsibility in the family is to whip children in the name of giving them discipline. And so the only relationship children have with their father is what? The belt. Now I'm not saying it's bad to spank a child if he has messed up. But it shouldn't be that your child, when he sees you as a father, the relationship between me and my son is that I am the one who holds the big stick. And so this man has been doing that ever since his son was small. And he has done it and the child has never questioned it. But this time round, when he removed his belt to start spanging the child, the child held the hand back and told him, Daddy, you are not going to beat me again. You'll only do it over my dead body. And the man, because he had never been challenged in his life, he wondered, how can you, a 15-year-old boy, engage me? But he was disarmed. 
And he said, fine, I'll drop the belt. But then now we will fist fight. Because you are saying you want to fight with me. Let us now face each other because you feel you are a man and I am a what? But the son said, dad, you don't understand. That is not what I mean. I can't fight you. Why should I fight you? You are my father. I would rather run away. But from today, I'm saying, Daddy, if I am to be beaten, let it be done by my mother. And you can imagine a mother beating a 15, 16 year old child, son. It is almost impracticable. They would not want to think of that because he can raise a hand, isn't it? But the son said, I'm willing to go on the floor so that mama can beat me up. It doesn't matter how many canes I would receive. And he asked, why would you want to be beaten by your mother? And he said, daddy, ever since I was a boy, I have never seen you in my life except with a cane. When I bring the fist structure home, it is mama who picks it up. It is mama who goes to the bank. I even know mama's account. She withdraws money, goes to pay school fees. When it comes to looking for school for me, it is mama who is doing it. What right do you have to spank me? And the father sunk. He realized. He had abdicated his responsibility. His duty, his role as a man, as a father for many years, over 15 years. And by now, when the child is ready to engage with him, he's saying, Daddy, you are no father enough for me. It is time for us as men to engage back in society. It is time for me as a man, my manhood need to be seen. It is not just in the putting on of the trouser. It is not in the biceps. It is in the responsibility. Praise be to God. I know men will be quiet on me. Society is crying for the male child. But the male child is looking for a father man and is not finding. Why? Because... Masinde is too busy looking for money to take care of the same son. But by the time I have gotten all the money in the world, there is nobody to enjoy that wealth because my son is looking at me and he is saying, yes, you went to look for the money. I am not there. Time has come for us to engage as men in society. When a man wants to engage, he does it with precision. When a man wants to engage, he does it with commitment. When a man chooses to engage, he does it with the seriousness it deserves. And that is why in the morning we heard very interesting things that men do when they want to engage, when they propose. And I posed this question. And I want to pose it again for two minutes. Or one minute, if you are a lady in the house and you feel that your man did the craziest thing when she was proposing to you in order to engage you, lift up your hand. I just want to pick one or two. I want to see some of the things that men do when they want to propose to you to engage. Please help me preach. Are you there? Quickly. We don't have much time. And I'm asking the ladies, not the men. Because you, you may think what you did was crazy enough, but your lady feels that was not enough. The thing he did until your knees could not hold it together, until you said yes. Where are you? Where are you? Please come, come running. Come and preach with me. Come and preach with me. Because when men want to engage, when they want to propose, the things they do. Oh, 
had striked from university in second year. Then I was home doing my chores. And uh, according to me, I never knew he knows he can get to our home. And uh, the way we had um, interacted, I think he knew my mom and dad are tough enough, especially mom. So it never crossed my mind that he can think of coming home. So I was busy scrubbing the floor in my very early clothes and yeah, I think I was in a mess, according to me. So as I was scrubbing, I, I just saw him there and you know, I don't know how lucky it was. I think she had, he had talked to my sister and he had given him direction up to our estate. Comrock Estate, house number 142. So as I saw him there, you know, I don't know whether to drop the broom, go and lock the door first, chase him away. I didn't know what to do. So whatever he came to do, I accepted. Lucky enough, I was home alone. And uh, <laughs> of course, he did his everything. He left me the ring, which of course, my parents never found me with it. I had to remove it for the <laughs> And uh, when I was... Nikimzindikiza, I think I was just, I was still in that confusion. So we locked the key. Yeah, I'm Lango, Nili Kafunga Ile, Kofuli. Natukatoka Nikafunga at a gate. So as we were, I was taking him to the main gate, I realized Sina Yoki. So you know, I can't take him, Nitarudi Nitapataje Yoki, Kokwa Nyumba. <laughs> So we, we had to come back. Akapanda yo get ya inje. You know now I'm remaining. <laughs> so he akapanda, aka kujia akapanda wali ya neighbor nyuma akashuka. Akapanda ile wali ya nyuma akangia na mlango ya jikoni because that was the only door open. And uh, got the key and still opened like. My mom doesn't know my, everybody doesn't. I think it remains. <laughs> Just hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please don't go. Please don't go. Please don't go. You said he did what he had to do and left you with a ring. Please demonstrate. What did he do? That is my interest. That is what I'm interested in. Because when men choose to engage, they do crazy things. Praise be to God. Of course, he didn't have to do the kneeling down. Okay, he's a village man from Kabondo. I don't know whether he knew the kneeling. But, uh, <laughs> but I think Tayari Nilikwani, he had surprised and impressed and swept me off my feet. So when he got the ring out, I don't know whether he, he talked much. All I know is that he left that ring on my finger. <laughs> Give a clap to Jesus. Things that men can do to get the love of their heart. Some will go on their knee and propose. And that is the only time in their lifetime that they ever get a chance to kneel before their wife. How I wish we could do it more often. I'm told some will take a wine glass and wrap the ring and serve. And as you sip and drink the wine, at the end of it, you discover there is something in the wine. You have been drinking the love of this man. How do you say no? How do you say no? If time was to allow and we were to go into the details, you will be shocked. When a man chooses to engage, the things they can do, they are amazing. Engagement. And that is where I'm headed to. Don't ask me how I engaged my wife. Because I come from the old generation before. Where you'll only look for words. The only thing was, how do I get the lines? And how do I compose myself enough to tell her? I dodged her for a number of years. 
just to say those words, I love you, would you be my wife? It took me time. That is me. But for this generation, I know even on the internet, on SMS, you can ask and you are told this is the line. And you go and you propose. We don't know whether it is your original line or it is somebody else's line. Praise be to God. But when we talk about engagement, and a man engaging, it is amazing. And so I want you to paint that picture in your life. When we talk about engaging in 2015, have it in your mind somewhere. Praise be to God. There is a deliberate commitment when you are engaging. At that time, it doesn't matter. I don't know whether this village boy from wherever is in the house. But even if he's in the house, it doesn't matter your status. At the time of proposing, even if you are the CEO, you will go on your knees for this lady. Even if you have millions of money on your bank account, you will go on your knees for this lady. Why? Because you have made up your mind to engage her. There are many other areas where men engage. I know of men and their football, men and their games, men and sports. Are we together? My new fans, are we in the house? Can I hear a good shout from Manu? As an old guys, are we in the house? Are you there? A good man is one who dies with his team even when it is not doing well. Praise be to God. When that man is there in the sitting room and he is glued on his screen, he is totally engaged. My friend, even if the phone rings, he does not care. Even if you send him a tweet, he will not tweet back. Even if you send him a WhatsApp, he will not respond until the game is over. That is the engagement I'm talking about. He can respond to that later. But look at what is happening in our generation today. How much are we engaging in the Lord? How much are we engaging in church? How many of us are ready to engage in the things of God? When you see an announcement like what has been said about men, on the 21st in the Maragoli Hills, it passes you like a TV screen that has passed. And then the event will come and go. And the goers who always go will go for the hike. But for you as a man, it doesn't touch you. Where is that commitment? Where is the commitment in the prayer service? Why are we absent? It is time for us to engage God with that precision. With that same commitment. So that when I stand out to be counted as a man, yes, I may have uh, 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 roles to play out there. I may be that doctor. I may be that lecturer. I may be that, that, that CEO. Thank God for that position. But when it comes to the time for you to engage with God, my friend, Forget about your titles. If it is the title that is going to be a hindrance for you to engage with God in 2015, tell God, God, for this time, allow me to put my title aside that I may serve you well. Praise be to God. A CEO of a company who supports Arsenal will find a close friendship with a pauper in the village who supports Arsenal. Hello? That should be the same thing when we come to church. It doesn't matter my position in society. Sometimes I look at the way we worship and you look at somebody, you come and you want to worship with your dignity. My friend, before God there is no dignity. David engaged God. He danced until all the kingly robes fell down. Please, when I'm engaging God in my dance, leave me alone. I said, when I'm engaging my God in my dance, leave me alone. 
Don't come and ask me, where is the manager in you? How can you be dancing like that and everybody seeing you? It doesn't stop me from engaging with my God. When I go to the office, I remain the manager I am. When you go to the office, you remain who you are. Where are the men that will engage in ushering? Who said you can't be a captain in the army and you are, not, and you are an usher? Who said? I keep on saying one time Captain Alwale came here when we were dedicating this church. The proprietor of Jet Lake. And he was carrying chairs and bringing them and taking them and climbing up there. And I told Apple, this is the CEO of Jet Lake. He said, what? And the young man was there walking and supervising. He said, what are you supervising? Even the CEO is carrying the chairs. When it comes to the things of God, put titles aside and let us engage with God. Time fails me to go into other examples. But think of that pilot when the plane is just about to take off. Everything else must come and stand still. The lives of the entire crew and the passengers in that plane, they rely on one person. You cannot afford to make a mistake. One simple silly mistake and the rest are garbage. Ashes. I can imagine a doctor on the operating table with a patient and you have a phone in the hand holding the scalpel and you're looking at Facebook. Is it possible? Holding the scalpel and at the same time you're looking at what's up. But isn't that what is happening in church? you engaging God. But where are you? In a meeting in Mumias yesterday, called for a workshop of class to form three. My wife had a newspaper, and a man asks, Miss Idea Gazetti, and she said, I'm not giving you a newspaper. And he said, Why? She said, Why did you come here? Did you come to read a newspaper or to listen to what is being said there? I thought she was harsh. But that was the reality because the moment you start reading the newspaper, what happens? No concentration. You're just there by body. Maybe the, your wife dragged you to go. And you said, Let me, I'll drive you there. Then you sit there. Then you're busy on phone. When the teachers are talking, nothing. When they are recommending anything, nothing. When they are proposing, you don't even know what was proposed. May God help us. There is one man whom I want us to look at. Called Jacob. And as I go to that, allow me to say this again. The reason the church and Christians have become a minefield for masqueraders is because we have refused to do the truth. We have refused to do what is right. When an offering basket goes round and we are watching the new, the, 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 the the, the, the what? The announcements. You go in your pocket, you take a coin, you slip into that. Who cares? So what happens? It forces a man of God who is crafty to come and say, go into your wallet. Pick the best. Wave it. So you wave it so that you can. Can you wave a coin? Can you wave a coin? I told the first church, I'm looking forward for a time when we shall have scanners at the gate. And we can tell God, God please help us here. That anybody with coins, you, remain, you keep them at the gate. You can pick them on your way back home. If you pass through, they cry until you are very uncomfortable. Because even after we have sent our Sunday school children, whom we don't even expect to give one shilling, you still find in our offering bags 
which men and women who are looking at me, you have comfortably taken a one shilling coin and you have deposited in the basket. Try it at the petrol station. Try it even to the next toilet where you want to help yourself. Why are we playing games with our God? Things that we can't do out there, we want to do them in church here. When was the last time you gave God a thousand shillings note? And how many times have you given your child a thousand shillings like nothing? If you do not have, we appreciate. Put in that one coin. Put in that one shilling. We are not consistent to the fact that some of us may not be there. But when God has blessed you, you can purpose to leave the coins in the car and say, these ones, let them remain there. Because it is time to engage with my God. You cannot engage God with coins and expect him to bless you. Why does he say in his word? He says, give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, that men shall give into your bosom. So when you're giving that one shilling, think as a man. God will increase it. And you can imagine one shilling. Sometimes you even get what? If ushers were to be here, they will tell you the shocking things they see sometimes. He will give it back to you. Press it down. And you can imagine coins being pressed down. Can they go? Listen to me. Can they go? What about when you shake them together? They all go out. Shall men give back unto you? If you're under the anointing of thousands, give to the Lord. If you want 500, give to the Lord. If you want 100, give it to the Lord. If you have it, don't withhold it from God. Because God is looking for men and women that are going to engage him even in giving. That was not my topic today. I spare that for another day. But we need to engage God at a different level. Jacob, please you lend me a few minutes because we spend a little bit while the techni technical things were not working well. Is that in order? Very good, you. Jacob, the son of Isaac. He was a twin brother. Please find some time as a man to read the story of Jacob from the beginning to the end. Time does not allow us. He stole his elders, elder brother's birthright by colluding with the mother. And I speak to us as parents here. If there is anything you can avoid in your family, Please have no favorite children. A daddy loves so and so, and mommy loves so and so. And it is evident. And even the children can look at you and say, No, 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 no. You only do good things for so and so. Me, you don't care. Me, it is daddy who will do it for me. When that happens, you start losing your children. Praise be to God. Have a balance for your children. And it starts with that relationship at birth. Don't wait when they are gone. I keep on saying, how many of us men who are here, you can look at me on the face and you have any love lost for your father. We care for them sometimes because of just the responsibility that he sired you. But not because he had a relationship. But look at how much relationship you have with your mother. Why? Because she stood in with you. She was there supporting. And that is why I'm challenging us men. Why can't we stand in for our children at the tender age? Watch them grow. Why is it when our children go to university, for example, they don't feel like coming back home? I look forward to a time when my son Enoch can call me and say, Daddy, I have missed you. I have missed being home. As opposed to saying, I have gotten wings to fly. I wish I could even go farther. 
than where I am. Because that is what we are planting in them. We cannot afford to be men of the last century. We have to be men of this generation. We have to be men that will engage our children. If you have a son, engage with him. Share with him. Talk with him. Take him out. Tell him this is a man-to-man -man talk. Hug him. Let him feel the love of the father around him. And I can tell you when he starts working, he will think of you. He'll not only be thinking of the mother. Today, if you go home, if you didn't get your father, you wouldn't care so much. But if you got your mother, if you got your mother is not there, you even feel like crying. Why? Because of the connection. It was there at the very beginning. Jacob. Esau. Suffered their own things, but we can't go into that. Until Jacob left his home country because his father wanted, his brother wanted to kill him. He went to a faraway country. And where he went, he met Laban, who turned out to be his father-in-law. And let me tell you, if you are cunning today to your brother, your father, your parents, or even your wife, you will also get somebody who will be cunning in your life. Because what you saw is what you There is a story circulating on one side of a man who cannot hold his trousers up. The zip must always be down. And he's always looking for other people's children to destroy. And they're here in society. And so he had a person who organizes for him, who brings for him young girls in society, and they pay him. And so one day, he told the guy who organizes for him, please do me a favor. Don't bring me a mature woman. Bring me a young, succulent guy. Pastor Anataka is saying, young chick. Spring. And the guy was very obedient. And he said, I will do that. How much will you pay me for that? He said, 10,000 shillings. Say, that's okay. But cash on delivery. He did it. Thank God the car was tinted. And he told him, you are, it is there in the car. It's there. It's there. Not the IBC one. And so the man walks tall and proud and feeling like today I have the key of my life. He paid this guy and he went. Lo and behold, as his target with all the confidence, with all the swag, and opened the door and sat on the chair and said, Baby, how are you? Only to find it was the daughter. The daughter screams, Dad, what are you doing here? The man says, Daddy, what are you doing here? And the man says, Daughter, what are you doing here? What goes round comes around. If you are a man, look at what you are planting in your life. Let it not come round. You have children. What are you doing in the clubs? What are you clubbing about? You will dance in darkness, dancing with your own daughter. What will you do? I would rather meet with my daughter in church here. She's praying in a corner. I'm praying in another corner. I'm safe. Praise be to God. Jacob chose to wrestle with God. As he was going back to his homeland, he reached a brook and something dawned on him. Yes, I have wealth. Yes, I have wives. Yes, I have children. Yes, I have servants. 
but my life is not complete. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes we hide in what we have. Today, society is defining us by the car we drive. Society is defining us by the house or estate you live in. Today, society is, 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 is defining us by the houses that you own. And listen to me. All that does not add value if you do not have the blessings of the Lord. And so Jacob told his family, please, let's go ahead. He crossed with them, crossed the cattle, crossed the wife, crossed the children. And while they were on the other side, Jacob came back on this other side. And he and we came back, he met a man whom he did not know. And they wrestled the whole night. Where are the men in the cage? We have even said, we hardly do we go the full night. We are only doing the first watch. Three hours, 5.30 to 9, you can sacrifice and come and engage with God. Praise be to God. Jacob wrestled with God the whole night. And when it was coming to daybreak and he was not letting go, the angel of the Lord broke his thigh and he told him, I will break this. But even with a broken hip joint, Jacob didn't let go. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Where are the men who are going to engage God and say, I will not let you go until you bless me. Jacob retreated to a place of solitude. Men and women, sometimes it is good for us to go aside. Jesus did it. Look at the miracles he did. You cannot serve God when you are always in the crowd. You can only know. I know sometimes when I'm called to pray, you can come here and you pray. And you speak all the English. You speak all the Luo. You mix all the Kiluya. And everybody says that is a man of God. What is your socket prayer? That is what determines a man or woman that is engaging with God. It is not what people think about you. Do in privacy. Jacob was already blessed. If he was living in our generation, he may have had two, three, four cars in his compound. He could choose. Somebody tells me somewhere, somewhere sometimes they close their eyes and they say, God help me today. And he closes his eyes. And when he touches this, it is a Porsche. Then that day he will ride in a Porsche. The following day he closes and he touches on the wall where the keys are kept and he finds a Range Rover and he picks the Range Rover. You may be living that kind of a life, but that's not a blessing. Those are just wealth. Those are just things of this world. They can be blown with wind like that and you are left a pauper. If that was to happen, can you say yes? Even in the absence of my wife, even in the absence of my husband, even in the absence of my children, I have a strong relationship with my God. In conclusion, just cut the other slides, let's go to the conclusion. Time does not allow us. God is looking for Jacob's of this generation. Men that are ready to wrestle, that are ready to engage with God. I would be glad to see how many will turn up for the Mount Vihiga hike. Praise be to God. Where men can engage with each other, where men can go on the top mountain and pray. Sometimes it's good to have a time of solitude on your own. Praise be to God. In your busy schedule, have some time of solitude with yourself. Had a meeting in Nairobi, Wednesday, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I told God, even in the midst of this meeting, and God, I've been given a wonderful hotel, serene environment. When the meeting is over, I want to have a time with my God. Praise the Lord. 
and they chose a place. This message was born there. I went for the sauna. Those of you who go to sauna, you know what happens there. It is back to Eden. Praise be to God. It is you to think about your God, to think about your family, to think about your children and what vision you can have for them. Why do we craft very good visions in our companies, but we have no vision for our children, for our families, where we are taking them? God is looking for those Jacobs in our midst. God is looking for the Davids in our midst who can dance before the Lord, who can worship before the Lord, irrespective of their status. A chief executive officer who has taken alcohol will behave the same way as a sweeper in the same office who has taken alcohol. Why do we come to church and we want to be so sanctimonious because of our titles? If it is the title, tell it, God, I lay it aside. After all, all of us walked to church. Who drove to church? Nobody. You parked it there and you walked to church. So we all walked to church. After walking, you'll walk back to your car and then you go home. Because this is a leveling ground. Praise be to God. There are some people, if you give them a chance, they will drive up to here. <laughs> because that is what they pride in. Men and women that will accept Christ's engagement. What am I saying? Christ went on the cross for my sake and for your sake. You can imagine as a man, you are kneeling before this girl and when you stand up, she says no. What a frustration. Christ has been kneeling for you on the cross at Calvary. She has, he has been stretching his hands to you and saying, will you marry me? And you keep on rotating round and round circles. I'm still young. I'm still a teenager. I'm still uh, 30. You're waiting when you'll be 50. Then you come to the Lord. It will not happen. That's why I'm saying. Engage and be engaged. When you get engaged, you don't behave like every other girl who is not engaged. You know you have somebody who has engaged you. You know you have somebody who is holding and waiting to marry you. And Jesus is waiting to marry us.